This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1250, Eating Mindfully, How to Devour a Super Burrito with No Regrets, part two, by Kylie Lassard of abluesky-mind.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Tuesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more, just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors, and always with permission from the sites. Now remember, today's post is part two from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That's episode 1249. But if you're all caught up, let's jump right in and hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Eating Mindfully, How to Devour a Super Burrito with No Regrets, part two by Kylie Lassard of abluesky-mind.com. Step three, fill your plate with food from all around the pyramid. If that overcomplicates things, just try to fill your plate with different colors and all three macronutrients, meaning carbs, fats, and proteins. This is a surefire way to make sure your meal is delivering a balanced set of essential nutrients. Step four, notice the flavors and textures of the food. This is worth reiterating because in my mind, it's akin to how one focuses on breath in meditation. The mind needs an anchor point to stay present in the current moment. And I think flavors and textures serve as fantastic ones while eating. Step five, give thanks. Experience a moment of gratitude for the ability to nourish your body in this way, whichever way you've chosen to feed it. Gratitude for the simple ability to sustain yourself can help add perspective to the moments when you feel like it's all too easy to over-sustain yourself with the abundance of yummy snacks and treats around you. Remember, there are so many people in the world who would delight in your overabundance. Step six, check in with yourself throughout the meal. Once you've determined that you are in fact hungry and need to feed your body, the dialogue continues. Make sure to ask yourself throughout the meal, perhaps after every few well-savored bites. Am I appropriately nourished yet? Would it feel best for my body to stop now? Step seven, stop when you're satisfied. Know that the most self-loving thing you can do is stop eating once you start to feel full. We all know that awful, overstuffed feeling after you've eaten more than your poor stomach can handle. There is no food so delicious that it is worth such pain and bloatedness. Step eight, treat yourself. At the end of your mindful meal, consider finishing the experience off with a few bites of something sweet, if that feels self-loving and indulgent to you. Dark chocolate-covered almonds is a personal favorite. My only advice is to try not to let yourself get into a habit of this. If you really need something sweet and want to wean yourself off of chocolate, fruit is a fantastic substitute. Eating Mindfully, Super Burrito Edition. So the big question remains, how do I mindfully enjoy food that I know is not exactly value added to my physical health? Things like burritos, pizza, burgers, and pasta, you know, the good stuff. Think of it this way, food is nourishing in more than one way. That's why you have terms like comfort food and happy hour. It's a social thing, a cultural thing, something steeped in tradition and meaning for most people. In big cities, it's often a form of identity, which is why I found myself face-to-face with a super burrito this week. San Francisco, California is known for their mission-style burritos, and some work colleagues and I decided to try one of the most legendary, La Taqueria. There is legitimate danger in thinking about food as solely a vehicle for calories and nutrition, because that's when you get into the toxic headspace of labeling foods as nutritious and non-nutritious, which generally spirals into good and bad foods, which attaches emotion and judgment to what is otherwise a very neutral thing, sustenance. My taqueria experience did not come out of a search for nutrition, though that is generally how I try to approach food. It came out of a deeper need to experience the identity of my city, try something new, and try something outside of my comfort zone and spend quality time with my coworkers on a little adventure through the city. So I came into the experience with a lot of joy. 
I wasn't here to stuff my face with a naughty burrito. I was here on an adventure with friends. When I got to the front, I confidently ordered a half carne asada, half carnitas with beans, avocado, sour cream, and cheese. You know, the super version. I thought I might eat half and save the rest for dinner, but really, I just wanted the full experience. No skimping. I savored every bite of that burrito. It was so freaking good. And I ate the whole thing, but not until after checking with myself a quarter, half, and three quarters of the way through. This is an especially important guideline when you're eating something on the less healthy side. So here I sit, full and happy, writing to you with the hopes that you too can have these sorts of food experiences in a completely guilt-free headspace. I hope to one day live in a world where no one experiences food anxiety when faced with social situations that include quote-unquote bad foods and one in which we're able to savor the occasional less healthy option. Because we spend so much of our time listening to and lovingly nourishing our bodies with mindful eating practices. You just listened to part two of the post titled, Eating Mindfully, How to Devour a Super Burrito with No Regrets by Kylie Lassard of abluesky-mind.com. Now we have all been adapting to a new normal. And like many of you, I have skipped grocery shopping altogether because of the convenience brought by meal kit delivery services like HelloFresh. And now it's the time of year again when people have renewed intentions to make meaningful changes in life. With HelloFresh, you can save time and money on grocery shopping and dining out this year while ordering your meal kits from the comfort of your pajamas. One of my favorite meals to make at home with HelloFresh is the scallops over truffled mushroom risotto. I love that everything comes pre-portioned to help reduce food waste and prevent excess of food from being pushed to the back of the refrigerator. By saving time in the kitchen, I gain more quality time to spend with my family, especially my cat. Now you can regain control of your time during those busy weeknights too. Go to hellofresh.com slash OHD10 and use code OHD10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash OHD10 and use code OHD10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Many of my students have told me that one of the most eye-opening books I make them read is The Blue Zones by Dan Buettner. The term blue zone refers to areas of the world that have groups of people that tend to live long, happy, and healthy lives. Now, when trying to determine why certain regions of the world tend to live longer, happier, and healthier lives, the author Dan Buettner found some common themes. One of those themes relates to what today's author Kylie has been emphasizing, mindful eating. In Okinawa, Japan, for example, citizens often live long enough to see their 100th birthday. A common mindful eating practice they use is something they refer to as Harahachibu. This roughly translates to stop eating when you're 80% full, or basically stop eating when you're satisfied. Stop before you feel full. This is because when you eat until you feel full, you've now likely consumed too many calories. Now, I'm not saying that eating until you're 80% full is going to guarantee you a long, happy, and healthy life. What I am saying is that this is just one of many behaviors that may help you achieve optimal health and wellness. Oh, and in case you're wondering what some of the other habits Okinawans and those living in other blue zones share, well, they probably won't surprise you. They stay physically and mentally active. They maintain close relationships with family and friends. They get enough sleep. They don't smoke. And they drink alcohol in moderation. Now, as a listener of this show, you're not really surprised by those behaviors, are you? All right, that'll do it from me for today. Thank you so much for being here every day. I hope you're having a wonderful week and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.